Tony. Just this one here and there. How's the time, Margot? Um, I, is it time for the thing? Yes, I think it probably is. Okay. Can you put it on the monitor for me? Thank you, Margot. So, today the theme is all about towns, buildings, pavements, things like that. I've got a building right down here. Oh, St Paul's no. Cathedral. Look at this, Margot. I'm going to add something to it. Oh, wonderful. We, we see a nose and a mouth, Straight don't away, we? Yeah. Yes. Here's another view of St Paul's. Looks a bit sickly, I'm afraid, but that's because I've done a little bit of tinting to it. Oh, I like the it. tint. I think that's oh, yes, good. well, not bad. What do you think is happening here? Someone's creeping over. Somebody's creeping up, you see, and it, it really does look as though it's looking over the top. And now if we do that... The helmet. Even more so. What? No tourists. Here's another. Look, even more colour. Oh, the what, I, what, I, what I thought here was that because we've got a policeman in the helmet, yeah. and seeing the shape of the Tower of Big Ben, we could do that. A clock for a nose? Yes, I've, I've even got a caption for this one. <laughs> L plate. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And Big Ben again, I thought, you know, on a festival day or something, when London was, is en fête, isn't that a magnificent bit Top of... Top hat, I'm Headgear, yes. And... Uh, I'm terribly sorry, this is really rather rude to poor old Big Ben, but the clock face itself is just crying out for a nose. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to scatter some balloons about while I put his bow tie on? Because this, I really think, does make that looks the, great. Whole, the whole thing very festive. Right, Tony, it? have a look at this one. Good. Now, do you know where this is? No. <laughs> it's the Tower of London. Is it? Now, mm -hmm. watch this. Now, does it mean anything to you? Yes, two pepper pots. <laughs> oh, that's quite good. No, wait a second. What about that? No. Does this mean anything? Yes, it's the red duster, isn't it? <laughs> now, this one's going to give it away straight away. Yes, doesn't it? How very nautical of you, Margot. Yeah. But not exactly a typical view of London. There must be billions of bricks, paving, tiles in the towns and cities. Enormous number. I've got a few here. These, of course, are not real bricks, but it's a pattern of bricks. And this is probably one of the commonest there is, the way they're bonded. You see it absolutely everywhere. And I thought I'd take that apart and we'd give ourselves another sort of uh, brick work. I wonder if you've seen bricks laid like this. You see, we're sort of alternating one way and then the other. I have a feeling that nowadays you'll probably see this sort of pattern. It's more likely to be used as paving than as brickwork on buildings, although you have a look at some of the older cottages in the country and you'll probably see one of the walls has been, has this uh, pattern used there. And as we go further on and on, putting down this pattern, you'll see what, that it actually is 
a sort of toothed pattern like that, a triangular one, going across. We'll get rid of that and look at something else. Today, this funny shape is used quite a lot in shopping precincts and paving various places, indoors and out. And you see how they go together. They key very well indeed. Has one very good thing about it. What it is, is because of its shape, they lock together very well and then they don't slip about, last much longer. And if you'd like to make that shape and play about with patterns, this will help you considerably. Two squares and two equilateral triangles. You play around with it and try and make that pattern for yourself. Now, this is a classic tile. It's very, very interesting because it's really two patterns in one. We keep seeing this as a sort of little flower form, but once we've done that, up leaps a circle. And really, we could just have that tile and we could make exactly the same thing. If we put four together, another phenomenon occurs. Not only do we see the circle, but they overlap. Right. This is the last one I've got to show you, and this is, uh, this is being seen all over the place in the country now. In the nearest town to me, there's paving like this. They're hexagons, six-sided figures, and they go very well together, and you can fill enormous spaces of ground with them. If I turn them over... and put them together, we have three cubes looking three-dimensional. And if we put something like that down on our city lands, my goodness, we'd be thinking we were going to trip over all the time. Anyway, when you're next in the city streets, have a jolly good look under your feet. You might find it very interesting. this over here. Now this certainly isn't a town. What I've done here is I've made a box shape, I've set inside a country scene and if you look down the side I've cut some slits. Now you'll see what those are for in a minute. Well in fact you're going to see what two of them are for now because if you have a look at this, on a long strip of card I've stuck some clouds and they balance in the strip and you can pull them back and forward. The next thing I've got on a strip is this, a piece of machinery. Now, it may look like a tractor, if you wait a second. Now, I've just made a little slit at the bottom here so that I can feed the strip through. And in actual fact, it's not a tractor because it's there to dig up to build a main road. Now, once the road's built, we can take the digger away and, of course, the next thing that comes along are the townhouses in the slot. Now, I'll show you exactly how I made that. What I did was I got a piece of card like that, and if you look, there's a space at the bottom, which is for the house, and then you have to have a 
a hook system with a slit. Mm. If I put it in here, you'll see why you needed slits down the side, because it will slot in like that. And of course, the next thing you want to do is decorate it. Now, you need a sky like that. Just cut out pieces of paper here. A roof, oh, that in position. You need a door. And of course, a window. That rather looks like a townhouse, I think. And before I put it in, I'll show you the one that's going to go behind it. It's got to be slightly wider so that it peeps from behind and also slightly smaller. And that's so it looks like it's in perspective. And going back into the distance, I'll put these in. Oops. Just hook that over there like that. There's one. There's two. Now, I've been doing a lot more town planning. Have a look at this. A row of houses. I've bent back the panel this time, and you can see the really tiny one in the back. I'll just put that in. There we are, townhouses. And on the other side, I've got to build the other side as well. If you have a look at this one, I didn't need to actually put the whole house in because you're only going to see a certain part of it, and I thought some curtains, felt pen, There we go. Flats, put that one in. And something you're always going to find in towns, I think. Factories, they're also going back into the distance. More perspective. Now, it's really building up now. And for a very modern town, you're going to get this sort of building, glass, windows there we are now that certainly looks town like and there's just a few more things well in fact one major thing how about the cars that you always see in towns cars and buses packed full of people i've got a little slot here which i'm just trying to feed through there we are it's hard to believe the area's changed so much It made me feel quite dizzy, that last shot. Margot. Yeah, that's beautiful. Did you like I it? I love it, yes. yes. And now, it's time to have a look at your work, because it's time for the gallery. I'm a great fan of cut-out paper, and I particularly like the way Alison's used it in her picture of a cat at a window. I think Lorraine is a most observant artist. She's shown all those different windows, as I'm sure they really are. good choice for Lynn's rooftop scene. A good choice of colour too, I think. I love the jolly faces waiting in their cars at the traffic lights and you've chosen great colours for this picture, Hugh. printed and painted lights on a dark background and it's a very effective way of making this sort of picture. In a few minutes I'll show you another way you might like to try. 
You often see high-rise buildings around town, and I think they're great fun to draw. Chad obviously thinks so too. Clever town effect from Robin's computer. By the way, I forgot to give you our address. So, here it is. Heartbeat, BBC Television, London, W36XZ. You know, our towns and cities are full of straight lines, aren't they? So I thought what we might do now is to do a picture, starting off with marker, all straight lines to start with anyway. Having done that, I'm going to give it a twist to there. And we'll start again.
fingers are the best thing to use here. I think we'll leave it at that. Your picture, it's got a lovely, quiet, tranquil feel. Could be something to do with the colour. And that, uh, that line what under... What on earth is that? Margot, yes. check, uh, shut the door, okay. will you? I'll check the window. It's my fault. I should never have mentioned anything about quiet nights in the city. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Margot, Bye. next time we'll have to do something about the country. What about the football? What?